You're listening to the Elvis Ultimate Fan Channel Podcast, the channel that is devoted 100% to the life and career of the biggest selling recording artist of all time, with your host, Steve Francis. Welcome to another episode from Elvis the Ultimate Fan Channel. Today, my guest is Barbara Smith. Most Elvis fans will know her by her maiden name, Hearn. Barbara dated Elvis in the 1950s during those heady days when he was on the brink of superstardom. I'm absolutely thrilled to say I have Barbara on the line to talk to me about her time with Elvis. Hi, Barbara. Thank you so much for taking time out today to speak to me. Well, thank you for your call. I'm very happy to hear from you. And tell me, I know the United States was being hit by a hurricane, but uh, it didn't hit uh, Tennessee, did it? Some of the remnants of it got to Tennessee, and some areas had some pretty fierce weather. But briefly, it didn't last long, and we're fine today. So you and your husband, Jim, are, are, are perfectly safe, yeah? Yes, absolutely. That's great. That's great. Now, a, a lot of my uh, listeners uh, will know you as uh, Barbara Hearn. I know you're Barbara Smith now, but uh, as I say, most Elvis fans will know you as Barbara Hearn that dated Elvis in the 1950s. And did it go into the 60s or was it just the 1950s? No, just the 1950s. Just the 1950s. I, I saw him a couple of times after the 50s, but uh, very briefly and uh our relationship was strictly during the 1950s. 56, I met him in about 52 or 53, not sure. And uh, we dated uh, 56 and a little bit of 57. But we always remained friends. Was, is, it, is it right that you kind of met him or knew him through Dixie Locke, uh, a former girlfriend as well? Yes, that's correct. Uh, he and Dixie were dating. And I may have met him even before then. Uh, a friend said that I did. I was at a birthday party where he was, but I really do not remember that. My first really uh, remembering of meeting Elvis was through Dixie when we both worked as teenagers in a department store during Christmas to make a little extra Christmas money. And uh, Elvis would come by to pick her up. And because I lived near her, he would drop me off home. And uh, it was a a ride about 25 minutes i guess so we you know everybody talked and laughed and got to know each other and uh then that's the only time i saw him uh i guess that was uh christmas of 54 maybe and then uh, uh that was just about the, uh, around the, 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 the time of his first record yes yes this one well as i often tell people it was when he was seeing all of his dreams come true and that's a beautiful time to be in someone's life when you can see that happen. Yes. And, uh, I, I guess uh, early 56, I ran into him again. And uh, he remembered me. And uh, he had been at a radio station, uh, television radio, to visit with George Klein. And I was there doing some work for the place I worked, uh, modeling things for their uh their store on television and as i came out of the studio i ran into him and he remembered me and uh we started talking and uh i guess he and dixie had been separated for over a year then or, or about a year maybe mm -hmm. and uh we just uh he said he was going out of town on a tour the next day and uh could he telephone me and uh he did and uh we saw each other pretty regularly from then on. And what's, what sort of uh, dates did you go on? Because obviously uh, the more famous he got, it must have been difficult to go out with Elvis. Well, for the first couple of months, it was it was pretty normal. You know, we'd go to a movie or we'd go out to eat. He liked to go to a restaurant called Jim's Place. I believe it was on, uh, well, it was in Memphis downtown. I can't remember exactly the location. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would go to, we would go to movies and, uh, you know, just out for a ride. And uh, then very quickly on, it became impossible to do that. And uh, ma mainly after that, we would go to movies, but it would be with other people so that they could uh, be on the lookout to make sure he was be safe and there weren't be too many people rushing him. Mm. And, but we spent, we spent a lot of time at his home with his family. Just, uh, 
Uh, and prior, you know, he, pr pr prior to him sort of becoming famous, as you say, and, you know, and, and just all the, 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 the madness and the superstardom, did, did you get the feeling that he was going to be something special anyway? No, I didn't. Uh, I, well, you know, it's been so long, it's hard to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I loved his music, I loved his singing. But really, in the beginning, it was it was just sort of a dream, you know. And uh, he really wanted to sing gospel music, and, and he loved uh, singing, you know, locally. And, and I guess uh, I guess everyone, his mom and... And he, probably him, too, just thought, you know, he would be a success, yes, because we knew he was good at what he did. But I don't guess anybody in the world ever expected it to be what it was. Yeah, yeah. And it, it all it all changed after he met Tom Parker. Yes. I, I, I often you know? uh, remember Elvis saying, you know, he, he thought he'd wake up one day and it'd all be just a dream or, or it would all be over and he'd be back driving a truck. Yeah. Well, I, I guess if you've ever been as poor as they were, you're never quite comfortable with the success and the yes. money, you know. Yeah. I know his his father was fearful of it ending. He said that so many times. You know? mm. Mm. Uh, one, once a uh, funny incident, uh, they got a new bedroom suit, and uh, Mr. Presley asked Elvis what happened to the old one. And Elvis said, oh, we gave that to, and he said, aunt or uncle, somebody, you know. And uh, Mr. Presley, and I, it's funny how I remember this, but I know how he felt about not having anything. Mm. And he said, well, son, I wish you would not give our stuff away. You don't know. We may have to take all this stuff and walk out of here one day with it. Yeah. Yeah, I always got the impression that that Vernon, you know, was as you say, fearful that it would just all the money would go and they'd be back to, you know, uh, being dirt poor because they were very, very poor in Tupelo, very, very poor. They were very, very poor. Yes, I often have to laugh and said that was the only time in our lives when my family had had more than his did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Did you did you get much time alone with Elvis when you were dating him? Actually, alone, just you and him. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he would come to my house, and you know, after dark where I lived, you really couldn't see very well on my street. And he'd park the car down at the, on the street, and uh, we'd just sit in the car or sit on the car on the hood, or, or or lean up against it, or whatever, by ourselves, just talking, listening to the car radio, and. Uh, we did a lot of conversation about music. I'm not musical, but I do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the back of my house is where the driveway was. And uh, well, you could sit out there in lawn chairs or whatever and just just talk and be alone. And also in his house, uh, although his uh, grandmother and mother and father would be there, you know, we could we could sit in the family room and be alone and. Uh, no, just being alone was never any problem. I, I used to look out his front window there on Audubon Drive in Memphis, and all the people, hundreds, and I used to wonder, you know, why am I here on the inside, all those people on the in outside? What the, what made that possible? But, you know, I was, I was awfully glad. But um, it's When you mentioned uh, Audubon Drive, um most people will uh, re remember and be familiar with the uh, pictures taken inside the house on uh, July the 4th, 1956, uh, on the afternoon, the, 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 the same day that he did the benefit concert in Russwood Stadium in Memphis. Yes. Uh, Al Werthimer uh, took quite a few photographs and there's, there's you wearing, I think it's a, a white... I, I, I'm guessing it's a white and black dress because it's, they're, they're black and white photographs. Yes, it was. A polka dot dress. Yes, I'd give anything if I knew where that dress was now. Yeah, I'd say it would be worth think, quite a bit of money. I, I was going to say, I think I could sell it for enough to buy the new house. <laughs> but they are. They're, 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 but, uh, they're iconic photographs uh, of you and him uh, listening to the new records he'd cut on the 2nd of July. Uh, don't be cruel, mm -hmm. hound dog, any way you want me. He he was playing those records for you, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, 
I think Hound Dog, too. I'm not sure. Yes, yes. Hound Dog, think, Don't yeah, Be Cruel, and Any Way You Want Me, I think, were the three he cut. Yeah. Everybody wonders why I wasn't out in the pool with him and they were doing all that. But, you know, I was all dressed up and my hair done. I didn't want to get out there and get wet. No, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. A lot, a lot of people uh, comment on the way he looked in some of those pictures that... In, in a couple of them, he looks like he might be angry or something, but he wasn't uh, at all. And uh, we were just listening and concentrating to the music because it was like 20 questions. When the uh, record had been played, he would question me about it. Yes. He, he, he always wanted other people's opinion. And uh, if you liked it or if you didn't like it, and if you didn't like it, what was it about it that you didn't like mm. it, you know? Yeah. Uh, should should he have done it this way? Should he have? He, he loved to discuss things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a delightful picture of you perched on the uh, couch uh, and the uh, Dodger, Minnie May, his grandmother, is also listening along with you. I think that's a delightful photograph. Oh, she was she was something else. Yeah, I think he was the only one that called her Dodger. But, uh, <laughs> he did. That was his name for her. And when I first uh, went to visit the family with Dixie, in Memphis, uh, and he, I believe he was out of town, uh, maybe whenever we would visit, I, d I really don't remember that he was ever there, but they lived on Alabama Street in Memphis, and they lived in a, a little apartment in a large building, a uh, uh, house, might have been four apartments in it, I'm not sure, two I know, but might have been four, but uh, he and she sort of alternated with the bedroom there was a spare room oh yeah and uh M mrs presley grandma presley she would visit with her other children as well and so elvis got the bedroom whenever she wasn't there and i don't remember but he may have slept in a on a cot or a small bed in the big uh dining room or living room or on the sofa i don't know but it, now i could be wrong because you know so long ago yes. but in my memory only Mr. and Mrs. Percy uh, had a bedroom and one other bedroom. It, it, it was, you know, it was not a grand place at all. It was just, uh, but but it was homey and warm and welcoming. Any place Mrs. Presley lived would be would be a home where you would feel comfortable. Yeah, I'd like to ask you about Gladys. Actually, um, what what sort of a, a lady was she? I think I know the answer, but uh... yeah, well, I have a standard answer and I sort of say anything good and wonderful you've ever heard about her, believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, she was a fine lady and I liked her a lot. We enjoyed each other's company and uh, we spent a lot of time together, even when Elvis wasn't around. You, you've, you, we briefly mentioned Vernon. Vernon would have little, been, been a little more sort of reserved and standoffish, wouldn't he? I think. Yes, he was. He, he was a more serious, I can't say serious-minded, but he showed it more. Yeah. You know? Well, Mrs. Presley was definitely the boss of that, that operation. <laughs> and uh, I think she was maybe more capable. I don't know. It could have been just that he was quieter, because he was always nice to me. Yeah. I think he was suspicious of uh, people taking advantage of Elvis. Yes, especially after it really got going. Yeah. He uh, he never totally trusted the rest mm. of them, mm. and he he championed Tom Parker because he had the money coming in, and Mrs. Presley did not like Tom Parker for any reason. She yes. really was against him, and I guess that's the only time that Elvis and his father went against her wishes. Mm. As far as I know, it's the only time she did not want him around, and he was a, a rude crude person as far as I'm concerned. I know a lot of people do champion him, and, but I think he was the worst thing that ever happened to Elvis. Elvis would have been happy singing with some gospel quartet or giving his little shows all over the country, and uh, his mom would have been happy. But uh, Parker was insatiable as far as making money. Mm. He just wanted all the money. It was never enough for him. <laughs> yes, I, I get that impression as well. Um, you were with Elvis at the uh, Welcome Home Elvis in Tupelo in September 1956? Yes, I believe it was the 26th of September. Yes, that's and right. I think it's called the Alabama-Mississippi 
state fair or something like that. Yeah. Now, uh, he, yeah. He, he did two performances, didn't he? He did a matinee and an evening show. And he, he wore uh, the velvet shirt for that. There was a blue velvet shirt and a red velvet shirt. It was did you did, did you make that shirt? Oh, no, no, no. I, 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 had somewhere in, I had somewhere in the back of my mind that uh, you had something no. to do with that shirt. Yes, I had something to do with it, but I did not make it. Natalie Wood, as far as I know, purchased those shirts for Elvis. Okay. Or either she had somebody make them. I don't know. I have read that uh, Mrs. Presley made them and a lot of different things. But, uh, you no, know, Natalie Wood gave him those shirts as a gift. Right. And right. Uh, <clears throat> as we were getting ready to go down there, Elvis handed me a, a laundry bag you know, with the hangers where the clothes hang and you cover them up with the, with something. And uh, he told me to hold that. Well, after about an hour, I just laid the shirts down on the sofa. I thought, man, I've, I've held these things long enough. <laughs> and uh, nothing, nothing more was said about them. And we got all the way down to Tupelo, and Elvis asked me for his shirt. I did not know what he was talking about. He said, the shirt I gave you to hold for me I said, oh, my goodness, you didn't tell me why you wanted me to hold them. I, they're back at the house <laughs> on the sofa. Well, uh, he called back to Audubon, and uh, there was still somebody there. And he told them to get in the car immediately and bring those shirts to him. And they must have broken every speed record in the world. So <laughs> they got there before the show started. And uh, he didn't get angry with me or anything. He just teased me forever, yeah. saying that I had done it on purpose. That I had done it on purpose because I was jealous that Natalie Wood had given them to them. Uh, you know, I'd heard so many stories about, you know, you'd made the shirts or you'd given him the shirts or his mother had made the shirts. So I'm glad that you I'm glad for you to clear that up today with me. That's exactly what happened. Though. It was blazing hot and those shirts were velvet. Yeah. He must have almost melted. It looks hot in the newsreels that I've seen and the, the the footage of the concert. You can see the blue skies uh, from the still photographs. I know the actual footage is black and white, but the, the you know you can see the lovely blue skies in the photographs. So yeah, mm -hmm. as you say, it must have been it must have been. A, and September, I, I know, it can be hot in in in, in Mississippi. Yes, it sure can. Now I I do know that you can take credit for this next one, the waistcoat uh, that you gave him for Christmas 1956? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, you know, what do you give somebody who either has everything or can get it if they want it? And so uh, I don't know what prompted me to do that, but I went down to Goldsmith's department store in downtown Memphis, and in the bargain basement, I bought enough materials for a vest, uh, lining, and a pattern for, we call them vests. I took the material to my friend's mother, and I asked her if she would make that for me, and she did. And it uh, turned out real well. She was excellent, excellent seamstress. And uh, Christmas came, and that, that's what I gave him. I bought a, um, a gold-colored belt. I think it was gold-colored. could have been black. I don't want to mm -hmm. to go with it. And uh, I think that was it. I uh, Maybe it was a, like a metal belt. You know, I can't really remember. And uh, he seemed to like it a lot. And uh, I was visiting a friend then in January when one of the Ed Sullivan shows came on that Elvis was on. And there he was wearing my vest. And I was so thrilled because then I knew he really must have liked it. Yeah. Very and I had to call my friend's mother and tell her to turn on the TV quickly that Elvis was on wearing her vest. <laughs> ah, that's a great, that's a great story. A great story. So um, then, then Elvis went in the army. Uh, she became sick. Yes. And she flew back yes. to Memphis. And he was, he was dating, he was dating Anita Wood then. That's right. And uh, yeah. I, was, I was, I was not dating him then. But I met Anita not too long ago. And uh, we were talking. And she said that Mr. Presley often spoke of me when they were in Texas. And that made me very happy. Yes, that's nice. That's nice. But then again, that's, you know, that strikes me as something that Gladys would do. You know, if she, if she genuinely yes. likes somebody, then she would, you know, she would always be fond of them. Yes, I think so. She loves young people, boys yeah. and girls. In the, in the very beginning, when the uh, kids would show up at the Audubon house, 
she would invite them in for cookies or sandwiches or Cokes or milk or whatever and sit and talk to them for the longest kind of a time. She, she genuinely liked the young people. I think um, Elvis' uh, f- being so famous did scare her a little bit, though. She was not a fan of the fame and the uh, notoriety. Yeah. She, she, would, she, would have been, she would have been happier without it. She worried about him a lot. In the beginning, she worried that the some some of the boys would be overly jealous of him because their girlfriends were so crazy about Elvis. And uh, it it worried her. I used to check in with her occasionally to tell her that he was all right and things were going well wherever we were, whatever we were doing. She did. And she worried. Well, she could have given lessons in worrying. She was a world-class worrier. She worried about him being out in the car on the road all the time. And they did have a few automobile problems you know and then when he started to fly oh my goodness she hated that Mm -hmm. she hated him flying so she worried about him an awful lot she would have been much happier i think had it not gotten to the point it did do you think that it it affected her health and uh maybe you know I, i i just don't know uh you know when she was around me people say she drank i never saw her drink I never saw any evidence of it in the house. Mm -hmm. I never smelled anything on her breath. I never, that was a surprise to me when, when I first heard that she, she was really, uh, you know, imbibed in alcoholic beverages. I just, I did not know that. And I was with her a lot. And for hours on end, I tell you, it took a lot for me to even believe that. I, but I guess it was true because so many people say so. But uh, well, it's it's it's, kept... it's, inter- it's interesting because, like I say, a lot of people take it for granted that she did drink. Um, and now you're saying that you know you never saw any evidence of it, but you spent a lot of time with her. So that yeah. is qu- that is quite an interesting thing to to hear. Yeah. Um, now. Yeah, I re- I was just so surprised. Yeah, I mean, I know uh, it's it, it's quite it's quite commonly said as well that she took diet pills because she wanted to look good. Uh, alongside Elvis. Yeah. Now, I know that in the 1950s, doctors did, you know, freely prescribe stuff like uh, Dexedrine and stuff like that. They absolutely did, yeah. And, and you know, it wasn't considered taking drugs. No. So, I, I don't know. I know she would have been so much happier had she been thinner. And she has a sister. I think it was Cletus. Yeah. Uh, to me, they look just alike, standing side by side. Cletus thin as a rail, and mm. then Mrs. Presley quite quite chubby, mm. but uh, they looked alike. And and I thought, she she would have been so much happier. She could have been thin like her sister. So she, he he went he he went in the army, which was probably another big worry for uh, Gladys because she knew that he would be going um, to Germany, um, right? And, and I'm sure she. They, they they planned to go with with him when uh, when he went to Germany because Vernon did, um, but sadly, obviously, as everybody knows, uh, she died uh, in August just before he shipped out in September. Did you uh, did you visit Elvis when she died? I was away on vacation when she died. My mother called me on the phone and told me, and we we stopped right that minute, went back to Memphis. I I visited in the visiting and uh uh went to the funeral and uh and it was a very very sad time I, I did not know she was that sick it was really a shock to me because i was you know i hadn't seen her in, in probably a few weeks and uh I, it was just a shock i was so sorry when when we went to the uh funeral we just were part of the crowd you know mm-hmm. I, I was impressed and, and very flattered that when we went to the funeral home, the some of the Memphis policemen that I had known when I was going out with Elvis, they stopped all the cars and let let me and my friend in so that we could go inside and, and sit. And that was very kind of them. Then after the funeral, I went by his house. No, I guess this was the day before the funeral. I went by the house because her body was there, I, as well as I remember. They wouldn't let me in the gate. The person at the gate did not know me. Uh-huh. 
And I, of course, I understood that. He didn't know me. Anybody could say that they were a friend, you know. So mm-hmm. I just left my card with them and said, well, just please see that somebody at the house gets this so that he will know that I was here. And, um, oh, I know more than got home than the phone was ringing. And he sent somebody out to get me. And uh, I went to the house. And uh, I, I, I'm afraid some people maybe think I'm making this up because it sounds so strange. But but it's true, and, and that's all there is to it. But when I was inside his house, he came over to me and, and hugged me. And he said, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Of all her friends, she would have wanted you here. And I know that's, that's maybe that sounds a little extreme, but it's what he said, you know. She would have wanted you here. Yeah. And yeah. and I, I thought here, and probably the saddest part of his entire life, and he's comforting me, you know. Mm. And I was very impressed with that. Yeah. But uh, he was obviously uh, inconsolable at the time. Uh, you oh, know, yeah. lose it, losing. Yeah. I mean, she she was everything to him. He, he I, I remember him saying once. Uh, I read it somewhere that he said, you know, he was doing it all for her and Vernon. That's right. And the sad part of it was she didn't want it. Yeah. Somebody very smart told me one time, when you give somebody something they don't want, you haven't given them anything. And uh, she did not want all that. If she could have had a nice house with him there, you know, just a normal life, she would have been a happy person. She didn't, you know, it's a pity that uh, the family of, Somebody that all that uh, came to really didn't want it, but she just she just wanted her her child, and she wanted him to marry and have lots of grandchildren and just have a just a really nice family mm-hmm. yeah. experience. And uh, she just wanted the simple things in life. Exactly, exactly. So and, uh, uh, after after he came out of the army, you uh, visited him in in Graceland. Uh, you know, I think I was there once, maybe twice, but I really just have memories of once. And uh, the time that I remember is, is the last time I was on any uh, personal basis with him. Well, it's a long story. I don't know how long you want me to go into this, but we were sitting in the basement, and there were a lot of people. Anita Wood was there, and uh, Red, and I don't know who all. And uh, they would, no matter what he said, they agreed with him, agreed with him. Well, and he and I had had a, had a running uh, commentary on our favorite singers and songs and all. And I always liked Peggy Lee. And I said, Peggy Lee was my favorite female singer. And he said, well, Patty Page was so much better. And we would go on and on and on. And we always had. So when we were sitting down there in the basement, he said something about Patty Page. And then he stopped and he grinned and he looked at me. And I said, yes, Peggy Lee was much the better and more <laughs> talented and blah, blah, blah. And he just laughed and he said, well, I can always depend on Barbara for a good argument. <laughs> and uh, we, we just laughed. And then he went back to everybody saying, oh, yes, 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 agreeing with everything he said. And so it, I know it's, it's hard for anybody to believe, but it really got just boring. Mm. And it was kind of sad to me. Too many yes men. That it had come to this. And so I just got up and left mm. without saying anything. And I went upstairs to call the, my mother to come and get me. Mm. I don't know how I'd gotten out there, but I did not have a car to take me home. And so uh, while I was talking to mother, he came upstairs and he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I've just called mother to come and get me. He says, well, why are you leaving? And I said, well, quite frankly, I'm just not having a good time. And he looked at me and, and strange and said, well, I'm not either. And I said, well, you can do something about it. We just stood there talking a while and, and mother drove up and I went out to, to get in the car. And of course he hugged me and kissed me goodbye. And uh, when he went out to the car, he opened the car door and mother stepped out and he put his arms around her and he just hugged her and hugged her. I mean, they'd been good friends. They talk and everything. But he just hugged her and hugged her, and he finally kissed her and held her at arm's length and looked at her and said goodbye. And uh, we got in the car. We drove down that that lane that comes out of Graceland and uh, got down near the end. 
And she said, well, I think that was a goodbye. Mm. And it was. Uh, we and, didn't uh, And you, you, never, you never actually spoke to Elvis again after that? No. We went to his concert in 1976 or 5 or 4, I forget which, at the Field Club. Cole Field House, the University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. And I had planned, my husband and I took some friends, and I had planned to uh, go down and speak to Mr. Presley and tell him we were there, and uh, if not to visit with Elvis, at least to let him know we were there and everything. But that was the worst show he had ever done. It was so awful. He was not himself. Uh, in fact, many people have said that he was very sick that night. Mm -hmm. But it it was not a good it was not a good show, so I never went down. I didn't want him to know that I had seen him like that. You know, I I think I think, I, I, I think the concert uh, you're talking about. I think yeah, I think is the one College Park in Maryland. I think that was 1974. Yeah. I think 1974 was September. Yeah, September 1974. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well, this, well the, it was. It, was it the Cole Field House mm. on the University of Maryland? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and a lot of people actually remarked that he was unwell that night. Yeah, um, but he was very rude to the girl singers. He said a couple of things to them that just—I mean, he probably didn't feel well, and all he wanted to do was just go lie down or something. But mm, uh, mm. I can't even remember what it was now. But it was rude. It wasn't nice. It wasn't Elvis. It wasn't him at all. I never even let him know that we were there. Uh, it's been yeah. said. It, it's been said that by the early to mid seventies, um, he was tired of being Elvis Presley. Yeah, I think he was. I think he was. They say, "Be careful what you wish for." Mm. Um, when the gods wish to destroy us, they answer our prayers. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, we'll have to mention uh, his death. Um, how did you hear? How, how did you find out that he died? I was at, I was at home. I was at home in Maryland, and my son came up, and I had been taking a nap, and my sons and uh, my mother were down in the family room in the den, and uh, it was came. Um, Kevin came up and uh, awakened me, and he said, uh, "Mom, Elvis is dead," and that's how I found out, and uh, and it was very, very bad. Uh, you know, it's shocking, really. And uh, I, I was so sad. And I, I guess the first thing I thought about was, uh, as I was looking at my child who had come up to tell me this, that Elvis would never be able to see his child again. That would be that would be the biggest blow, as far as I was concerned. Yeah. That he would he would never, never have his family again, and never have his child. He would never see her grow up. As I could see mine grow up, I hoped. I just felt like, you know, he was being denied so much. And and another aside, any time I saw Elvis, he would always say, "Now, if you need anything, let me know." If, if he, he even sent word after I was married by mutual friends that you know he he, if I ever needed anything, I need only let him know. And so I thought about that. I thought, you know, it's like a security blanket. I never needed anything. Mm. My husband and I had a good good life, and we had everything we needed. But in the back of my mind, I knew if anything ever happened really terrible, I had a security blanket to lean back on. It, it, it was a lovely thing to have, uh, as you say, a security blanket. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm It was. So, so uh, you, you, you met, you met uh, Jim... Your husband and you married on the first of July, nineteen sixty-one. Yes, the same day as Red West and Pat Boyd married. That's Very right. Same day. I knew there was something familiar about that date. Yeah. And you, and we you, married in the morning, and I think they married in the evening. Uh, and you've had many happy years since then, going strong. Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine, 59 years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it's been the. You know, there's a there's a quote in the movie Lawrence of Arabia, it was written. So Jim and I had figured the odds of us meeting were tremendous. So it must have been written. We only knew each other four months when we married and uh, it was a good thing. It was a good decision on both our parts. We've never regretted it for a minute. And our children are great, loving, 
I couldn't ask for nicer children. They love us both. They look after us. and uh, You've been blessed. We have been blessed, honey. I, I would give anything if I could go back to July 1st, 1961 and do it all over again. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely thing we've, to hear. We've traveled all over the world with this work, and uh, we've never had a whole lot, but we have always had enough. Um, what do you actually do these days then? You just take it easy because I, you did used to run a bed and breakfast, Holly Tree Manor. Yes, we did, and we enjoyed that. And we met Elvis fans from everywhere, Australia, South Africa, all over Europe, and many, many from Ireland. Yeah, uh, we, we did. We loved it. But we both got sick. We both got cancer at the same time, and uh, we, just, we just couldn't keep it up. In fact, we had to go to Florida to the MD Anderson Cancer Center, and uh, I had to do chemo for seven months. And uh, you know, it, it's been real rough, and it's taken all of our energy. And uh, we we didn't expect not to be able to to do all that we were doing, and uh, we just had to stop everything. And right now, we would love to sell our house in Trenton, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. which is about two hours from Memphis, and go back to Florida because our boys are in Florida, and they're just having a fit to have us come down there because they don't like us being so far away. And in truth, it's not safe because, you know, he's 87 and I'm 83, and uh, we don't, you know, we can't do what we used to do. We never dreamed we were going to get old. We thought it'd always be like that. Yeah, I, I so, think uh, you, you always you always think, you, you know, you'll... you'll You'll have your health, and, and and you know. I think you just take it for granted. Um, yeah, a lot well, of people. A lot of people do take their gra for granted. We did. We've been healthy so all of our years, and strong, and able to do everything. And uh, it, it's come. It's quite a shock that we're just normal people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I, that, that's what a lot of people probably forget. You know, at the back of it all, Elvis was just a man. Um, there, right. there's, there's that famous quote uh, when he was uh, interviewed uh, prior to appearing at Madison Square Garden where he said the image is one thing and the human being is another it's very hard to live up to an image yes. mm -hmm. and I, I, I think that was one of the most telling things he ever said because you know he, he mm -hmm. said to somebody as well after uh, they renamed the uh, boulevard that runs past Graceland, they named it Elvis, yeah. Elvis Presley Boulevard. He said, I'm not that sign out there. I'm not that street out there. I'm just, I'm me. Yeah, I often tell people, you know, I knew him before he became a boulevard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's, and, it, uh, it's, it's been a great pleasure speaking to you, Barbara. Uh, thank you for taking the time out. You're one of the few people that I wished I could speak to from the Elvis world. So I've actually fulfilled a dream today by speaking to you. Oh, well, thank you very much. You've, uh, what, are, what do they call it? Uh, the list that people make out of things they want to do. Oh, a bucket list. Bucket list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you can check that one off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's, it's been lovely talking to you. And uh, I'm so pleased that the, the fans still care for Elvis and his music and appreciate the kind of person that he was and also that so many people are teaching their children I mean the first music those babies hear when they come home from the hospital is an Elvis song and uh, that pleases me so and the other thing that gives me enormous pride and pleasure is that the fan clubs all over the world are doing such wonderful charitable things yes. in his name yeah yes that would that would make him very very proud. I think to think that all oh, that was still going. Oh, it would. Going. It would. And he thought he'd be so forgotten. He, he, you know, he thought he'd be forgotten in a few years. And and he has, yeah. you know, I mean, for over forty years after his death, and he's still, uh, uh, you know, as fondly remembered as as as, as when he was alive. Yeah. yeah, that's that's such a good thing. It's it's a, it, you know it makes me real happy that that's the way it has turned out. Uh, I do hate still today that he died so young, and I hate it still that he didn't get to know his child as, as growing up and as an adult. I think it would have made a big difference in her life. Yes. I think they're spoken with a lot.
people who have lost their parents when they were young, and they never really get over it. No, I think you just learn to live with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because there is no alternative. Yeah, exactly. If if his mother had lived longer, I think uh, his life would have turned out a lot differently. I think so, too. I think so. I think that was, of course, that was the biggest tragedy of his entire life. And a lot of people in the beginning, I don't know how people feel today, but they thought it was strange that he should be so fond of his mother and so connected to her. But in the South, that was not a a strange thing. My father visited or called his mother every day of her life. Mm. And, uh, you know, families were so close. And I know uh, someone said to my son one time, I hear that you are a mother's boy. And he said to them, yes. And the problem with that is? Mm. Very, very, that's a very, very good answer. If you can't love your mother, who can yeah. you love? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it, it would have been a lot different had she lived because she, she kept everybody on track. I think in her youth, she really liked to have a good time and dance and, you know, sing and all that kind of business. Mm. But morally, she was on the right track all the time. Yeah. And yeah I, she I, was I, a good person. I think she would have guided Elvis and, and maybe he wouldn't have made some of the decisions that he made or not so much he made, but maybe he was forced into, you know, um, by, as yeah, we, we yeah. mentioned earlier on, Colonel Tom Parker. Mm-hmm. She may have gotten rid of him eventually. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll unfortunately now we'll never know. No, we'll never know. That's just uh, that's the past. Well, thanks for yeah. talking to us, uh, Barbara, and uh, I'm sure the fans got a great kick out of hearing all those stories. Well, I hope so, and uh, I, I hope they continue. It's <laughs> just the way they are. Okay, I'll let you. I'll let you go. Thanks very much for spending this uh, this nearly an hour actually with me. Oh, really? Yeah, you, well, you know they say about Southerners, we never use one word when ten will do. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I could speak to you all night. I really could. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And my husband just reminded me, this is my last interview. I've turned down a couple since I agreed to do this with you. I'm just, uh, I'm just too tired to do to do it. You know. Wow, so, so, uh, uh, so, so we, we can actually tell everybody then that this is the final interview you'll ever give. As far as I know, you know, never say never, but uh, I have turned down a couple and, and I, I don't want to give any more. You know, I, there's so much out there. Mm. If, if it's something real serious, I would talk to someone if it was really, real serious. Mm. But uh, no, I, I don't care to do it anymore. I, I think I've done enough. Yeah, I, I never yeah. did anything until... 29, 2009. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the first time that anybody even knew where we were. So uh, I, I figure I, you know, well, I've given it 11 years. Yeah, well, the, the, even more so than for me to be thankful that you've actually agreed to speak to me. Oh, thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure. And, you know, I've enjoyed the interviews I've done. Yeah. And, yeah. and the uh, the television things I've done, it's not been a chore. It's It's been a... A labor you know, of love, a, la- a labor of love. There you go. But I, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm old and I'm not well, and uh, I'm really one part of me is extremely miserable because we want to sell our house and get to Florida. Yeah. And uh, because of the virus, yeah, we had it on the market, but when the virus got so bad, we didn't want people, you know, walking through the house. And no, no. That's Maybe right. bringing the germ up to us. So, yeah, uh, yeah. You have to, to you, you, you have to be so, you have to be so, so careful, so, so careful. Oh, you do, you do. And it used to be just you know old people or people with uh, uh, existing problems, but now it seems like it's reaching out for children and young people. And uh, and I hope you're well over there and uh, enjoying life. Ireland is such a blessed place oh yes. we loved it i don't know it's terrifying but i hope you and all of your listeners come out of this okay and uh that's very kind but you take care okay oh, you God. take care now and thanks again okay thank you bye 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 bye